Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying with us. Um, on the other hand, if you have joined us, a very big welcome. The topic for discussion tonight in the Community Issues Program is Diabetes in the Community. And I'm very privileged to have a very special guest from the local community. Her name is Helen Snowden. She is the lead nurse in the community. She has been providing a service for the last 35 years, caring for people. Um, over the last 17 years, she's been working in Tower Hamlets with the local community. And prior to that, she has worked in Bangladesh, in the Bangladesh High Commission, uh, providing a nursing service to the High Commission staff and their families, as well as the local Bangladeshi community. Helen, just before we went on break, mm -hmm. we were talking about um, Uh, the percentage of, of, of people um, kind of having diabetes and its symptoms uh, and how severe this problem is amongst um, East London um, and how that compares with other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. My next question to you is um, what can people do um, to help them in preventing uh, developing diabetes? I mean, I think that's a really important question because I mean, we all have a responsibility for our own health. So I think it's really important that we look after our own health and our families, you know, our children's health. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing that we should recognize and probably do recognize is that we all probably eating too much you know and um, of the wrong thing so I think a lot of it's around you know diet exercise lifestyle changes so um, I think we so, okay so let's talk about diets then I mean mm. what are the sensible things to eat or okay. perhaps not eat yes yeah well I mean I would start with first of all talking about um, things that have no value you know in terms of um, giving us vitamins and minerals and the building blocks that we need for our bodies so things such as I would suggest straight away that people would hopefully stop drinking fizzy drinks because they don't give us any any nutrients so fizzy drinks don't give any nutrients does That's it contain correct. a lot of sugar? It does. I mean, the majority, even the diet drinks, are not going to give us anything valuable. So if we could go back to having water and tea without any sugar in it, of course, you know, these kind of drinks are much better for us, much cheaper, and don't damage our bones, which a lot of the fizzy drinks can do as well. Really? So um, I think a lot of it is around trying to change people's attitude towards fizzy drinks, trying to um, also encourage people to have more healthy foods, such as, you know, cutting out the fast food, the, the chicken and chips that we see, you know, in the local community. It's a very common sight to see young people eating chicken and chips, which, you know, unfortunately is not the healthiest option. But having said that, I think local authorities are, certainly I've seen locally mm -hmm. here, over the course of last 15, I don't know, 10 to 15 years maybe, there are more and more fast food That's outlets correct. being opened up to the local community. That's correct. I mean, And yet we're spending millions and millions of pounds every year uh, by the NHS mm -hmm. in trying to control the epidemic, as you put it. Absolutely. I think it's, I mean, it's a really good point that you make there, Doris, because it's so important that we recognise that we have, you know, the whole community has a responsibility um, towards um, our people, you know, that everybody who's living here to provide healthier choices for people and um, to stop having chicken and chip shops next to local schools for example and to um, help people encourage people to make healthier choices so making healthier food a bit cheaper and a bit more accessible because I think a lot of people find it quite difficult to access a healthy food mm -hmm. so it would be hopefully encouraging people to have more pulses you know more beans less less um, rice and carbohydrates so you know a lot of people do have quite carbohydrate dense Mm -hmm. diet so it's mm -hmm. things like pasta rice potatoes and um, those are the things that can break down into um, different types of sugars but mm -hmm. one of them particularly glucose which can cause a lot of problems in diabetes so mm -hmm. if we could cut out a lot of the carbohydrate rich food then 
focus more on healthier foods, just things, simple things, you know, like beans on toast is a really great healthy option to, for right. people to have. For example, toast made with brown bread or well bread? seeded bread is good you know okay. um you know higher fiber bread is better because mm -hmm. it keeps us fuller for longer sure but um you know even if we had you know a half and half so you can get the bread you know that some people find a bit more palatable you know mm -hmm. mixed with seeds in it that's that's a very good option things like dals are very good as long as you know they're homemade without the added ghee mm -hmm. um and you know lentils are brilliant you sure. know but you see a lot of if I may divert or perhaps focus on the Asian diet, mm -hmm. a lot of the Asian diet is very oily. It is. You yeah. mentioned ghee, mm -hmm. they use a lot of ghee, they use butter, sure. uh, and um, very greasy. Mm -hmm. And also, they eat a lot of rice, mm -hmm. which is what? Mm -hmm. Carbohydrate? Mm, that's correct, yes. Um, how do people refrain themselves from sure. that kind of diet? I think. You know, a lot of younger people now recognise that um, that's not the healthiest options, and I think a lot of younger people are moving away from the heavy, the ghee, adding a lot of fat to cooking. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people have learned to reduce the amount of fat they put in the cooking, try to dry fry and bake rather than sure. adding extra oil. Sure. Um, and I think it's really important that people recognise that. Um, you know that there is too much too many too much rice in the asian diet and replacing it with lots of um vegetables and pulses and salads and that kind of thing instead of instead of mm -hmm. rice with every meal which i think is you know what can happen in, in a lot of uh, people's diets so what would your advice be that they should eat a lot more salad and healthier stuff if possible and perhaps cut down on the rice and perhaps the the red meat and I think it's small changes. Everybody, we all need to make small changes. And for what I say to patients is, let's start by having rice with just one meal per day, and then the rest, the, the next meal, um, have fill up with lots of vegetables, stir fry vegetables, salads, and um, maybe some lentils, um, and try and avoid having rice with each meal. So I think it's you know little steps. What about things like rotis and chapatis? Yeah, and I mean again, bread and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so long as it's you know it's portion control, like it's one with with them um, with the meal, and you can't have both. You can't have you know uh, bread and rice at the same meal. So ideally, you're trying to avoid too much carbohydrate with each meal. Yeah, but the Asian community have, if I may say so, um, a big appetite in sure. terms of. <laughs> You know, eating sort of lots of different types of food, things like red meat, chicken, sure. fish, yes. dal, yep. vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, and even dry fish as well. That's, That's right. very, yep. very, very yep. common. And also a lot of bhajis and bortas and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, you know, which tends to end up on the dinner table. That's right. And if people take a little bit of each mm -hmm. one, at the end of the day, they've consumed quite a lot. It is a lot of calories, isn't it? If you look at it, you know, like that with lots of different things. So it's trying to restrict for all of us, you know, everybody, not just the Asian community, it's the actual portion control as well. Sure. So it's, it's trying to reduce the amount we're eating. We're all eating more than we ever did. Sure. And so we can all cut down in terms of what we, things like restricting meat to maybe a couple of times a week as a treat. Sure. Chicken and fish is a better choice. Sure. And Bangladeshi community is very good on fish, so I think yes, that's a really yes, healthy yes, choice. And yes. often it's not necessarily deep fried, you know, sometimes it is cooked, you know, and boiled, and, and that's excellent. So sure. there are some really healthy choices out there. Right. Okay, so we've talked about diet. Now, the next thing you said was exercise. That's correct, yes. What kind of exercises that people can do that will help them? Well, I was really prefer to patients to just walk as much as they can right. because it costs nothing it's it's good for you um, and brisk walking is as good a form as exercise as anything and I think if we can move away from people thinking that exercise is only going to the gym because mm -hmm. the most important thing is to get out there and get moving so whether that be cycling walking swimming playing badminton doing something every day for at mm -hmm. least 30 minutes that makes you sweat Sure, okay. sure. So 30 minutes a day is a must that people if, should do. Yeah, that's what I, you know. It and it has to be a vigorous you know, exercise where it makes your body sweat. That's yes? correct. That correct. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay. You've mentioned brisk walking. What about slow walking? Well, 
any walking's good, but the faster the better. You're going to burn up more calories. Right. You know, you need to get your heart you know, working because it's a muscle. It's like any other muscles in our body. Mm. We need to use it regularly and, um, you know, make it uh, work for us. So sure. we sure. obviously want to live as healthy a life as possible. What about things like cycling and all that? And I know you're a keen cycler. Right? I am yeah. a keen cyclist. And I just think, you know, it's great for the environment. It's great for the body and mm. um, it's cheap. So, sure. you know, you can save a lot of money as well what and about keep yourself swimming? healthy. Well, we're lucky because we have some fantastic swimming pools in Tower Hamlets. Yes, and, and, and lo local, local authority absolutely. has made it free for the community, That's hasn't they? There are some sessions that are available for free. Right. And I think... And especially women on the session absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yep. yeah. So all these things are just brilliant opportunities um, to, to get out there and, and get moving. Sure. Um, is there anything else that the community can do to change the current diabetes epidemic if I may mm -hmm. say so. I, I mean I, I think it would be fantastic if we had some safe areas for people to exercise in. So for example when I lived in Dhaka I used to see every evening I would see so many people going out, walking together in groups, um, you know, ladies in shawar kameez in saris, putting on their trainers, going out walking every night around the parks. Unfortunately, really Which park is that? Is that the, <laughs> is that the Romna Park? Or probably. Or? <laughs> it's, it's like, it's so fantastic. You just don't see that here. And I just mm -hmm. think there may be an issue around people feeling unsafe sure, in the community. Sure, I think sure. there's got to be some campaigning around making places safe for people to exercise. Sure. Um, obviously but shouldn't that be a joint initiative, perhaps? I think it's really between important. the NHS and the local it authority and definitely. the local community at large as well. Absolutely, you? I think that's so important. Um, we've talked you know, already about the fact that we need to stop having all these um, fast food outlets. I think that's really important. I mean, um, going back to the um, exercise as well, there are some local... Alan, we have a caller. Okay. Let's take the call. Hello, caller. Good evening. as alaikum. Hello, alaikum. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can, yes. Um, I got a question. I have a diabetes for a long time, more than 12 years, type 2 diabetes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, I take the metformin and statin, uh, and uh, sometimes I take the herbal medicine like uh, uh, garlic tablet, uh, black seed uh, oil tablet, capsule, and uh, turmeric, uh, uh, this kind of thing. So. D does it help to, for the diabetes or is it harmful? Do tell me, please. I shall put that to the expert and she will answer that. So he has type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. He takes metformin and I think stigmatine or something he said. It, it uh, takes it's a statin. statin. It's statin. Yeah, statin, statin right. to low statin. cholesterol. Right. And yeah. he also takes things like uh, garlic tablets mm -hmm. and uh, turmeric and various other herbal stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that good for him or is that bad? Um, it sounds like you've got if you could make changes to your diet, you wouldn't need to take any of the extra vitamins and the supplements you're taking. So unfortunately, um, you know, we all like a pill for every ill, but you know, if you, the important thing is to, to get all these nutrients from your diet. So if you can eat a healthy diet, you know, chicken, fish, vegetable salads, try and avoid too much red meat, you wouldn't need to take the extra supplements. So you wouldn't need to take the garlic and the, um, all the all you know the other turmeric and so on you can get that naturally through through your diet but does that help it doesn't no it doesn't. unfortunately there's no evidence to show that all these extra so the trouble reasons. nowadays is that you see so many stuff on the social media absolutely and you just don't know i know that's what a big to problem. believe and what not to believe sure and i think uh, the, the important thing is to look at where the information is coming from for you'll often find it's sponsored by some company, company so if you okay. can try to always look for um evidence based sources you know such as the NHS. Sure, sure. So anything you said is evidence based i.e. based on as a result of research being That's undertaken, right. tested mm -hmm. with a proven result sure. is usually the way we're yeah. forward. So the advice to our caller is that he shouldn't have to take this garlic or herbal medicine as he calls it or uh, turmeric or whatever it is mm -hmm. provided he's eating 
a healthy diet. That's correct. That's what all the evidence shows. So what would be an ideal healthy diet? I mean, you can have all the garlic and the turmeric and all the all those things in the food, you know, in your right. in your normal day to day food. And there is evidence that things like turmeric, ginger, garlic are generally good for our health. So I think it's fantastic to get that in the the form that it's produced in. You know, it's and cook wouldn't use it within your food as opposed to buying um, you If know, people overcook mess. the food, is there any chance of it being destroyed from the natural goodies? Sometimes it can be if it's overcooked, yeah. Right. So people need to be careful not to overcook it mm -hmm. and to ensure that they get the goodness out of the food sure, that they're eating. that's correct, yes. yes yeah. We have another caller on the line, so let's take the call. Hello caller, good evening, Slam welcome. Hello, I am a patient of diabetic. Uh, actually, uh, I have um, uh, this uh, type 2 diabetic. And uh, actually, I want to know any medication and any research is going on for the diabetics and what uh, in the future, uh, what is the future of uh, medication of diabetes? We never got any information from outside. Uh, what type of research is going on uh, on this diabetes? Thank you very much. Can I just ask you your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, I am calling from Ilford, Ilford. and my name is Akon. Thank you very much. I think that's a very good question, um, Alan. Any research or anything going on or where can they get further information from? So Diabetes UK have an excellent website that gives lots of information about um, different types of medication that people can take. So there's an awful lot of uh, research currently going on in terms of um, moving away from the old fashioned type of medicines that we've used in the past. Um, at the moment, we're trying to um, help people to change their diet, do more exercise, lose weight, stop smoking, as opposed to just jumping to take medicine straight away because often um, diabetes can be almost reversed if you can lose weight. As you get older, you may need to take some types of tablets and sometimes we do need to take different types of injections, which is not always insulin. Um, things are definitely moving forward with the research. So we're looking at different types of uh, ways of s people getting the medicines that which will help um, keep their blood sugar um, level all the time, as mm -hmm. opposed to having big spikes up and down. Sure. Well, Kola, I hope um, Helen has been able to uh, provide a comprehensive answer to your question. And thank you very much for the call. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anybody else that wishes to participate in the program, please feel free to call us on 0203-397-4740. I'll repeat the number again, 0203-397-4740. The number should be displayed on our screen, so keep on uh, picking up the phone and, and uh, phoning in. Um, Helen, um, in terms of... Um, local authorities responsibilities and working in partnership with the local community and other agencies what else do you think needs to be done to educate people about diabetes and in terms of prevention programs mm -hmm. uh, i think it's really important that um, people be can um, feel that they can come to their doctor or speak to their nurse to get advice and help and support if they think there's a possibility that they're developing diabetes or already have diabetes. I think it's key that people um, get educated at local level, for example in schools, in places such as um, mosques, you know, religious worshipping places, it could be mm. churches, um, and I think it's really important that we put the message out there, public health needs to be involved in mm. campaigns where people can easily access information and, for example, even have, you know, blood testing done at, in the marketplaces where people are available um, so that they can be helped and supported mm. with, with um, diabetes. So what role can the local authority do? Uh, uh, you've mentioned places of worship from the local community. What about the NHS? So what the NHS, they do provide education in, in some various 
um, mosques and other places. You know, I know they go in and do Ramadan sessions, and um, there are people. You know, for example. Um, nurses and doctors going into schools or going to health fairs and giving um, support and advice. Um, I just wonder if there's something around, hopefully, um, the you know charities getting a bit more involved. For example, we don't have a local diabetes UK support group, and you know we've got a huge need for it in the local community. So something mm -hmm. along those lines as well might be more helpful. Sure. Well, thank you for that, Helen. We need to go on another short break. Uh, we will continue with our discussion after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't go anywhere. Stay with us. We've gone on a short break. We'll be back very soon. Thank you. <laughs> 